Have you ever wondered when Hungary, one of the oldest countries in Europe, first tasted the bittersweet essence of democracy? In the tempestuous year of 1848, a wave of revolutions washed over Europe, leaving no stone unturned. Among them, the Hungarian Revolution holds a special place, marking a pivotal moment in the nation's history. This revolution, intimately linked with other uprisings in the Habsburg realms, was not just a fight for freedom, it was the dawn of a new era. In April of that year, Hungary took a remarkable step forward. It became the third country in continental Europe, trailing behind France and Belgium, to enact a law implementing democratic parliamentary elections. This legislation, known as Act 5 of 1848, was nothing short of revolutionary. It transformed the old feudal parliament, known as the Estates General, into a democratic representative parliament. This new law, offering the most extensive suffrage rights in Europe at the time, was a beacon of progress. It was a bold statement against the long-standing privileges of the Hungarian nobility, which were utterly erased by these April laws. But this was more than just a political shift. It was a seismic cultural and social upheaval, a redefinition of what it meant to be Hungarian. The revolution was a call to arms, a demand for change, and a statement of intent. It was a challenge to the established order, a cry for equality, and a demand for justice. However, as history often reminds us, progress rarely comes without resistance. The new Austrian monarch, Franz Joseph I, arbitrarily revoked the April laws without any legal right, as they had already been ratified by King Ferdinand I. This unconstitutional act escalated the conflict between him and the Hungarian parliament, marking a crucial turning point in the revolution. And thus, the seeds of democracy were sown, but the journey to full bloom was not as easy as it seemed. Imagine the shock when the newly appointed Austrian monarch Franz Joseph I decided to revoke the April laws. The April laws were a beacon of hope for Hungary, transforming the old feudal parliament into a democratic representative one. They were a promise of change, of a new era where the privileges of the Hungarian nobility were utterly erased. But then, like a storm cloud blotting out the sun, Franz Joseph I, the new Austrian monarch, arbitrarily revoked these laws. This act, devoid of any legal right, was a slap in the face of the Hungarian parliament, a violation of the trust and hopes of the Hungarian people. This unconstitutional revocation escalated the conflict to a level that was irreversible. The Austrian monarch's overreach was a catalyst, a spark that ignited the already simmering tensions. The Stadion Constitution of Austria, a constrained constitution that followed the revocation of the April laws, further fueled the fire of discontent among the Hungarians. And amidst this turmoil, the pacifist Batiani government fell. They had sought agreement, harmony with the court, but their fall paved the way for a new power to rise in the parliament. Enter Lajos Kossuth and his followers, a group not content with mere agreement. They demanded full independence for Hungary. The Austrian military intervention in the Kingdom of Hungary was the final straw. It resulted in a strong anti-Habsburg sentiment among Hungarians, turning the events from a revolution into a war for total independence from the Habsburg dynasty. The Hungarian Revolutionary Volunteer Army, composed of around 40% ethnic minorities of the country, stood against the Habsburg dynasty, representing the diverse and united front of the Hungarian people. The stage was set. On one side, the formidable Habsburg dynasty, on the other, the indomitable spirit of the Hungarian people, united under the banner of independence. The stakes were high, the tensions palpable. The stage was set for an epic struggle between the indomitable spirit of the Hungarians and the formidable Habsburg dynasty. What happens when a nation's thirst for freedom becomes an unstoppable force? It's a question that takes us to the heart of the Hungarian War of Independence, an epic struggle that unfolded in the mid-19th century. The spark that ignited the war was the unilateral revocation of the April laws by the new Austrian monarch, Franz Joseph I. These laws, which had transformed Hungary from a feudal society into a democratic one, were abolished without any legal right, a fact that only served to fan the flames of conflict between the Austrian monarch and the Hungarian parliament. The struggle for independence was not a solitary endeavor, but a collective effort that saw the Hungarian Revolutionary Volunteer Army come together. This was a diverse force, where around 40% of the private soldiers were ethnic minorities of the country. The army was a reflection of Hungary itself, a melting pot of different cultures and communities, united in their pursuit of freedom. The officer corps of the Hungarian Honved army was equally diverse. About half of the officers and generals hailed from foreign lands, bringing with them a wealth of experience and strategic acumen. 
Interestingly, there were just as many ethnic Hungarian professional officers serving in the Imperial Habsburg Army as there were in the Hungarian Revolutionary Forces. As the conflict escalated, the pacifist Bathiani government, which had sought agreement with the court, fell. This led to a sudden shift in power, with Lajos Kossuth's followers, who demanded full independence for Hungary, gaining the upper hand in parliament. Their demand was not just a political one, but a call for the recognition of the Hungarian identity, an identity that had been suppressed under Habsburg rule. This was a war for total independence, a war to assert the sovereignty of a nation and its people. The fight was fierce, the stakes were high, but the spirit of the Hungarian people was higher. Their pursuit of freedom was an unstoppable force, a testament to the indomitable will of a nation yearning for self-determination. But was this just a war fought with weapons? Or was there a deeper ideological battle at play, one might wonder? The revolution was not only a military conflict, but also a clash of ideologies, where the ideas of liberty, equality, and fraternity were pitted against the old world order. On the surface, it was a struggle for independence, a fight against the Habsburg dynasty's iron grip. But beneath this, the revolution was a beacon of liberal ideals, echoing the revolutionary spirit that was sweeping across Europe. The Hungarian liberals, like their counterparts in other parts of the continent, were not just fighting for their country. They were championing a new moral and political standard, a new vision for governance that was fundamentally different from the feudal monarchies of old. The Hungarian revolutionaries believed in the power of democracy, the value of human rights, and the possibility of a fair and just society. They envisioned a world where governments were accountable to their people, where every citizen had a voice, and where the rule of law prevailed over the rule of kings. This was the ideological battle that they were waging, and it was a battle that resonated with similar movements across Europe. In the realm of foreign policy, these revolutionaries supported countries and forces that aligned with their liberal ideals. They believed that governments and political movements sharing the same modern liberal values should form alliances against the feudal monarchies. This was a radical idea at the time, but it was an idea that would ultimately shape the course of history. The Hungarian Revolution of 1848 was more than just an uprising against the Habsburg rule. It was a struggle for a new world order, a battle for the soul of a nation, and a testament to the power of ideas. The revolutionaries did not just want to change their country, they wanted to change the world. They believed in the promise of a better future, and they were willing to fight for it. This was not just a revolution, it was the birth of a new era of liberal internationalism. Their fight, their struggle, their sacrifice, all of it marked the dawn of a new age, an age where the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity would light the way forward. In the face of the fiercest resistance, how far would an empire go to maintain its control? Picture this. The year is 1849. The Austrian Empire teeters on the precipice of collapse. A series of devastating defeats at the hands of the Hungarian revolutionaries had pushed the mighty Habsburg dynasty to its limit. In this dire hour, the young emperor Franz Joseph I made a desperate plea for assistance. He turned to Russia, a fellow member of the Holy Alliance, an alliance formed to suppress revolutionary movements. The emperor humbly kissed the hands of Nicholas I, the ruler of all the Russians, in Warsaw on May 21, 1849. This dramatic gesture marked the extent of the crisis engulfing the Austrian Empire. Nicholas I, recognizing the potential domino effect of a successful revolution, agreed to aid Franz Joseph. He dispatched a formidable force of 200,000 soldiers, supplemented by an additional 80,000 auxiliary troops. This joint Russo-Austrian force represented a formidable wall of opposition for the beleaguered Hungarian revolutionaries. The combined might of the Russo-Austrian army proved too powerful for the Hungarian forces. The revolutionaries fought bravely, their courage fueled by the desire for independence. But the military might of the two empires was overwhelming. The Hungarian forces were defeated, their dreams of independence crushed beneath the boots of the Russo-Austrian soldiers. In the aftermath of the defeat, the Habsburg power was restored. Hungary fell under the shadow of martial law, a bitter pill for a nation that had tasted the sweet nectar of freedom, however briefly. The revolution had been quelled, the status quo restored, but this was not the end, far from it. The revolution may have been crushed, but the spirit of the Hungarian people was not. The fight for independence had only just begun. This marked a crucial chapter in Hungary's history, a testament to their resilience and unyielding desire for freedom. It was not a defeat, 
but a spark that would continue to ignite the flame of resistance in the hearts of the Hungarian people for generations to come.